from Guys Demon 1, 2, and 2, and it's List Day. Ah, yes, List Day, and, uh, I upgraded the set! Now that I've moved in with Amanda, that's what I've been doing for the last couple of weeks, if you're watching this when it came out, I have my own space, so I figured it was time to refresh the background. Hope there's some cool stuff here you guys notice. I might change it up every couple of weeks, I don't know. In order to kick off my brand new set, I figured what we're going to do is a funsy list this time. And today we're going to be doing the top 10 cards that can come off the ban list with a hard once per turn. Regardless of what the card does, as long as the hard once per turn seems to fix the card, that is the errata we are going to go with to say that it can come off. We cannot change anything else about the card, so, so the rest of the card works exactly the same way. And the list will be in order of increasing effectiveness of that hard once per turn. So basically number 10 will be it's still an extremely powerful card even with the hard once per turn. And number one, you're, you're basically murdering the card by doing it. It completely ruins the way the card works. Without further ado, let's get started! Hey guys, Future Dave here. Uh, sorry to interrupt your list, but I did need to stick something in because Ryan needed me to do this. He just had to get into the next video. Ugh. Over on my Discord, we are going to be ramping up our tournament offerings. Already you have the ambient quest of the Gym Leader Challenge, as well as the custom format tournaments that we do every couple of months. However, we are also going to add a bunch of free tournaments, large monthly tournaments that are a lot like regionals, where it's like you know, a bunch of rounds and it's Swiss and all that hooey, as well as weekly tournaments, which are going to be more like your local events, where it's all in one sitting and you just play a couple of rounds and it's a very small thing. Those tournaments will most likely be advanced format standard Yu-Gi-Oh! or a Duel Links format. And to make it more spicy for you, we're going to be offering Davinator Championship League points. Every match you win in every tournament gets you points towards your total, and at the end of the year we give out prizes to the winners. So that even if you don't do that well in a tournament, the more matches you win, even though you're like X3 by this point, are still going to be at least good for your total. Just something that we want to do to give you guys something to play because real Yu-Gi-Oh is somehow still not real. And in that note, we also might try to do remote duels. Uh, they're a bit of a hassle to set up, but we will see how it goes. Anyway, back to the list. Number 10 is the equip spell Smoke Grenade of the Thief. This one's like brand spanking new on the ban list. Funny thing about this card is it spent pretty much its entirety of its life, which is like a 15 year old card. This card came out very early in the history of the game. It spent most of its life as like a pack filler joke card and just not very good. But then we got that Infernoble Knight deck and they just can abuse equip cards like crazy, probably what regular Noble Knights always intended to do. And this card went from completely ridiculously bad card with a goofy activation condition to probably the best target for their deck. What's it do? When this card is destroyed by a card effect while equipped to a monster, look at your opponent's hand and discard one card from their hand. Now on the surface, that sounds like a really powerful card effect and frankly it is. The reason why a card never really probably saw any play is because it's an equip spell and it's gotta get killed by a card of it. It's a bit clumsy to use. It's not, it's it's no confiscation. Well, why are you pulling me? I'm right. But Infernoble Lights can abuse this card and just frankly loop it. And because it does not have a hard once per turn, it really does ruin the card. The card's gonna be number 10 because now that we have that Infernoble deck, the, the card is actually playable. It's actually quite good. Undoing the clumsiness of the card because you can proc the effect yourself, but it's no longer a busted hand loop. So I, I think that's probably fair. Number nine is Elder Entity Norden. Oh yeah, it's your boy Norden, the single best instant fusion target that we pretty much have in this game. Well, that's arguable, but still, it, yeah, I think he's the best one. And despite that fact, he was actually banned probably for fusion substitute, being properly fusion summoned and not the instant fusion. <laughs> Go figure. But either way, the card is absolutely fantastic. What do? When this card is special summoned, you can target one monster in your graveyard, special summon that target. Its effects are negated and banish it when it leaves the field. Norden happens to be a level four. I'm sure the old crap in your graveyard is level four as well. So it's like a free Xe summon, a free Link summon, a free Synchro summon. Uh, so you might not even, depending on how you, what you summon and how you do it, you might not even lose the card that he's getting. And frankly, it doesn't even matter. Not being a hard once per turn means if you can just continuously special summon the Norden, you can just keep getting stuff. And not only that, but if we do want to go down the instant fusion argument, that does properly fusion summon the card, so Brokan Shokan. <laughs> Uh, 
勝率も魔術師。But I think slapping the hard ones per turn on this card would make it unbannable.、Uh, it does frankly make instant fusion probably stuck at one forever. But I think doing that like once, and that's probably only once while you're building your board, I don't think that's too bad. Still, an extremely powerful effect and certainly barely nerfing the card, but、uh, it's now a good card. It's no longer a broke card. I think, that is, I think that's the point of what we're trying to do here. Number eight is. Level Leader. Level Leader is a fantastic monster card that has the following effect. If this card's in your graveyard, you can target one level five or higher monster you control, special summon this card, and then lower that monster's level by one. This face up card cannot be tributed except for the tribute of a tribute summon. <laughs> oh, sweet summer child. What do you know about fear? I love old Konami trying to balance cards by putting crap on it that's like, yeah, no one will ever use it. No one, no one planned on using it for that to begin with.、Uh, I guess they were trying to make sure you couldn't cannon soldier this thing a million times. Sure. Why is this good? Well, it's not a hard once per turn. Point of list. So, as long as you maintain some high level monsters on your board, like while you are synchro climbing, you can just keep playing this thing. It's just another free body. So, what is a free body? Let's look at an example. And being a level one and an insect means it's, it's, it's actually relatively easy to get to. There's a couple of things you can do, like one for one and stuff like that. And not only is it really, fant frankly, fantastic for link summoning, depending on what you're doing, even XE summoning, but it's especially good for, for link summoning because links are just really generic and don't care what the hell you're summoning half the time. So. Uh, it's just a free body. Hell, they don't, they, like, they, they don't care if you're a token or whatever. So, yeah, this is really good. You just probably just extra link. Oh, but with the hard ones per turn, I think just like Norden, I, I, I think it ends up being particularly fair. It's just a card that allows you to synchro climb a little bit more or link climb a little bit more. One more free body. I, I, I think that's pretty fair. And at a hard ones per turn, that means next turn you, you can use it again. So it gives you a, a small amount of recovery every turn in case something goes south during. Your opponent's turn. I think that's kind of cool, always being your option. Number seven is Fairy Tale Snow. All of my furry fans out there, this one's for you, boys, girls. It, knowing, knowing my analytics, it's, it's, it's boys. <laughs> Not only is she super cute, ooh woo, she's also just a, a, a broken card. Level four light spellcaster with 1850 attack for some reason. Thousand defense. What do? When this card is normal or special summoned, target one monster your opponent controls, change it to base down defense position. Nice. Nice. When it's summoned, it book a moon's a thing. A la Tsukiyomi. Okay, that's 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 pretty solid, Dave, but、uh, does it summon itself? Yes. If this card's in your graveyard, quick effect, you can banish. Seven other cards from your hand, field, or graveyard to special summon this card, which therefore then procs its own first effect, Uwu. And as a quick effect, you can use it as disruption during your opponent's turn or during your own turn to try to like、uh, chain block a thing to dodge a hand trap or something. There's a lot of interesting things you can do with not only a quick effect, the summon, but also a、uh, basically a at will book a moon. And it's a light with 1850 and it's a spellcaster. There's a lot of weird stuff that can get to that. RIP Burly Infusion. Ooh, w o o As a hard once per turn. Uh. It's a lot of resources. It's a lot of resources to,、uh, for just one Book of Moon effect. If you were using it to like combo off and extend a couple times, summon it like twice during your turn,、uh, sure you're blowing through your entire graveyard, but it is like two free bodies. That's really good. But as a hard once per turn, now you're going to start using it offensively and defensively. It's still very, very good. I don't think it's that broken anymore. This one's a, this one's a, this one's a toss up for me. I'm not. The card's very good. The card's very good. It depends on what other cards are legal in the format, frankly. Number six is Substitute or Mind Master. We're gonna go with Substitute、uh, for the official one because Mind Master is a tuner. And because of Halka Fibrix, we can't have nice things. So I, I would think that Mind Master would be probably still too good. So we'll go with Substitute. That is not a biased opinion. One level one Aqua, 100 attack, 2k defense. It's a frog. You better believe it. It's, well, it's like technically a toad, but you know what I mean. What do? You contribute one monster to special summon one frog from your deck. Give me this back. Give me this back. I want to search swap frog. I just want to search swap frog. I'm tired of not opening swap frog. Except frog the jam.、Uh, because this card hasn't been eroded yet. 
<laughs> or updated. It's not even called Frog Jam no more. It's Slime Toad. You, it doesn't even work. You don't even need this. Also, did you know it all it has a second effect that no one cares about? Your frogs can't be killed by battle. Who, who gives a shit? I care. Combos with your dupe frog, I suppose. It's actually counterintuitive. You kind of want your dupe frog to get killed by battle. I guess it, it's an attack locker. I don't know. It's, it's stupid. It's not a hard once per turn, so you can summon your entire freaking deck. I don't know who designed this card. You ruined my frogs. You won't let me have this. Give it a hard once per turn. It's actually... Then the card advantage gets wonky, and it's not so good no more. It's still very strong. It's still very strong, but it... What makes this card very good is the fact that you can just summon your whole deck. So the fact you can't use it a bunch of times, like I said, the, the advantage gets wonky. So it, it just becomes a it becomes a weird a, a weird uh, one for one for Swap Frog to blow your normal summon. Not the end of the world, but it's it's certainly not nearly as good. Number five is Grinder Golem. Ah oh, yes, Grinder Golem. Poor Grinder Golem. He didn't deserve what he got. He, he, he didn't know what he was doing, man. Those Link summons came out of nowhere and people were like, oh, look, I can loop him. And he's like, but that's not what I'm for. I was supposed to just be a, a stupid way to get two tokens on your board. Uh, crash him into me for Infernal Tempest for the cheesiest deck in the world? I don't know, but it isn't this. It was never supposed to be like this. But yeah, no. All you Link spam people, you ruined it for, for poor Grinder Golem. Grinder will never be the same without him. <laughs> what? What? But yeah, uh, I think if you, you can't just keep bouncing and summoning a bunch of stupid tokens and bouncing and summoning more tokens and, and, and going off like crazy for basically free, I, if you can only do that once, I, I, I don't think it's that bad. Sure, you could still use it and bounce it and then use it next turn for like a recovery play, but you did you did blow your normal summon. You can't normal summon when you use the damn thing. And it will still allow you to make a cheesy, like a link to or whatever. But I think, again, similar to... Uh, some of the other loopy special summon bodies on the list. I think just being able to do it once, I think it, it lets you extend your plays out, but it, it's nothing crazy. Frankly, I think the card's almost unplayable at a hard ones per turn <laughs> because it is uh, blowing your normal summon is a pretty steep cost to ask a player to do unless you can just do it a million times like you could without its errata. And I don't know about that. I, I think no one would play it, but you could conceivably do it or you could still do it for your, your dumb Inferno Tempest. You could always still do that with that. All right, finally, we got something that's not a monster. Card of safe return. The cool thing about spell cards is you can kind of just slap them down. So if they don't have hard ones for turns, you start getting into weird, weird territory here. So you gotta be careful. Card of safe return is a fantastic card. And there's a couple of decks I've played in the, in, in the history of the Davinatorness that I would have loved to have card safe return. This continuous spell says, when a monster is special summoned from your graveyard, you can draw one card. Sure, it, it misses timing, but for the most part, as long as the only thing in the chain is just summon a dude from your grave, you're probably gonna get the draw. It's probably not gonna miss. And if it's like zombies, where you can just summon a buttload of crap, or I don't know, uh, even the frogs, for instance, I think I think Ronan Toten wouldn't make a miss timing for any reason. Yeah, you're summoning a bunch of crap from your graveyard, you're gonna draw a bunch of cards. Broke! No offense, but I think it's kind of gross. However, if you give it a hard once per turn, it almost becomes unplayable. It's a cheesy do-nothing card that misses timing that uh, basically becomes reverse Supply Squad, and that is funny to me. <laughs> Why does no one play Supply Squad? Because because uh, it only gets you a draw when something is destroyed. So you're like, oh, I'll play a, I'll play a, some dumb, like, True Draco or something. Uh, okay, sure, but now it only gets you a draw when your deck's doing the thing that it was intended to do. So as a draw card, it doesn't fix any of your hands. It just makes a good hand better because it only works when your deck is working. A draw card should work independent of your engine so that you can use it to get to your engine in case you bricked, except for the draw card. Hence why you play draw. It's why Pot of Desires is good. Because I don't care about the next 10 cards in my deck if my hand is shitty. Why would you say something so controversial yet so brave? I just need to play. So yeah, so this turns into something like Supply Squad where no one runs it because in, in theory, yeah, it's pretty solid. It's a cute little draw card, but it only works when your deck is working. So it, it you can no longer abuse the fact that, well, yeah, sure, it makes a good good hand better like it even does now but it makes a good hand into an infinite draw engine so that is worth the win more i don't think anyone would play it i think it actually murders the card <laughs> number three we're back to monsters it's the plant duo sam sarah lotus and oh boy i gotta re i'm reading this one i'm not gonna try uh phenoxian i mean it's like supposed to be phoenix 
Cluster Amaryllis. Sarsaparilla. They're basically the same card, and I think they're on the list for the same reason. They both summon themselves, like, during the end phase, and, and then, like, depending on your board, you can set up a stupid, like, link board with... What the hell's the name of the card? <laughs> In the script, I forgot I named him Top Tier Graphic Boomer Dragon. <laughs> Topologic Bomber Dragon. Uh, could just keep blowing it up during the end phase and keep summoning themselves during the end phase. We'll go with Sam Stero Lotus because uh, it's with uh, Cerberus and Cat Bat. I think that I think that combo is a little easier to set up. You just keep blowing them up and you keep doing burn damage. It's an infinite loop and it's it's stupid. So of course it's a stupid cheesy gimmick burn loop. So if I make it a hard once per turn, it becomes an unplayable mess. Cause yeah, then it's just cheesy burn for like 400 damage or something that no one cares about. It's bad. It's incredibly disrespectful. So yes, you absolutely murder the car. You murder these two. You <laughs> just straight murk them. Murk them. Someone will still try it though. Someone, someone would still try it. Number two is Butterfly Dagger Elma. The absolute dummy mommy of dumb loops. Dave, how is your card not number one? Well, I mean, yeah, it, it really probably honestly could be uh, if you didn't know what number one actually was. Because, yeah, the way this equip spell works is the equipped monster gets like 300 attack, right? It's something stupid. And when this card is destroyed, well, it's equipped to a monster, it just immediately adds itself back to the hand. Great, I can loop 300 attack power. That's terrible. And you're right. Except, of course, if you have it next to like Royal Magical Library and Gear Free the Iron Knight, Gear Free the Iron Knight by its own ability automatically kills the butterfly Elma and uh, your, your Royal Magical magical library gets a spell counter because you did still activate a spell card and now you just keep doing that and doing that and you can you can activate elma an infinite number of times during your turn and you just keep draw your entire deck and instantly win with gear free the iron knight and butterfly dagger elma and just some other stupid tertiary card you can do a bunch of stupid infinite draw and burn loops it's it's ridiculous it's it was never intended to be used like that and now you can't even summon like elma because she needs the dagger on board in order to even play her. And you can't do that. So, so ah, feels bad, man. That's terrible. And if you were to give Elma the dagger, not the lady, a hard once per turn, it murders it. It straight just obliterates it. It turns from one of the most broken cards in the game uh, into just like the most underwhelming equipped spell in the world. Power of the Guardians got nothing on Elma's dagger alone. Give me that at a rod and duel links. I'll play Guardians. I don't run. All right, we have an honorable mention. It's Lunalite Tiger. Lunalite Tiger is only an honorable mention because it does have a hard once per turn on its monster effect. But its pendulum effect uh, to just keep summoning crap from your graveyard does not. And it's got that stupid restriction where the thing you're summoning is destroyed during the end phase. Why does Konami keep using that as some sort of balancing agent for a card's effect. Do you guys know how to play Yu-Gi-Oh? Have you seen someone play Yu-Gi-Oh in the last 10 years? Everything I'm special summoning does not sit on the board for more than like two game actions. Unless it's an extra deck boss monster that's intended to stay there by the end of the turn. So this is, this is, I'm, I'm gonna go on, a, I'm gonna go on a, a rant. I'm gonna go on a rant. Jerome, will, Jerome is gonna hear this and I'll never get it sponsored by Konami because I'm telling them they're, they're dumb by doing this. <laughs> Give stuff a hard once per turn. And not only that, the, the effect they felt that they needed to put the hard once per turn on, the monster effect is a stupid, a stupid floating ability. Just, <laughs> oh, why? But we also have a dishonorable mention. Uh, it's Gumblar. The amazing world of Gumblar here is a dishonorable mention because it does have a hard once per turn and it still got banned. <laughs> so it's the antithesis of the listithesis. That is, I'll, let you, I'll let you chew on that one for a while. Thank you so much guys for watching the video. If you guys want to help support the channel, check out my links down in the description below. I've got links to the Discord, Facebook, and Patreon if you want to get in touch with me, help with the lists, things like that. Or if you want to save some money, you can head over to Metamat's website, use my code TROLLMENI at checkout. You can save 10% off a custom cloth playmat like one of these bad boys. Or if you want to waste your money on expensive cardboard, use my TCG player link in the description below and put off your financial obligations. And number one, the card that somehow was more direly in need of a hard once per turn and would be more absolutely destroyed by it, Mass Driver. A hard once per turn turns it into Ass Driver. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's my profile name on Grinder. Oh, I haven't recorded in a while. What does this continuous spell card do, just for the record, for the uninitiated? You can tribute a monster on your board to inflict four or burn damage to your opponent. Whoop de freaking do. No, that's a lot of damage. That's terrible. That is so bad. Except unless you can do it a million times. If you can do, I don't know, the substitute from like earlier on the list, just keep putting things on board, you can just keep sacking them for 400 damage. 400 damage isn't that much unless you do it a bunch of times and kill your opponent in one turn. Death by a thousand paper cuts, as it were. Trickstars would be proud. And you might be saying, well, yeah, but Elma's just a bad equip card. But think about it. Taking away the ability to loop this thing and just only giving it a hard once per turn means that you are going minus one for 400 burn damage. That is so bad. Like, that is legendarily bad. Not only that, it's requiring you to sack a monster for 400 burn damage. Elma gives your monster 300 attack and allows the summon of a monster. Frank, a, arguably a monster the deck needs to be playable. So, like, and it's also a pretty benign uh, equip spell. So, if you're forced to give it to your opponent, it, it's not the end of the world. So, I think you can make, I, I'm pretty sure you can make the argument that Mass Driver ends up worse with a hard ones per turn. All right, guys, that was the list. I hope you enjoyed it because I apparently had, I actually had a ton of fun with this. I, I think I'm just enjoying my new set. Hey. Shut up. I know I'm having a good time. I got, I got new soft boxes. I think are a little bright. I don't know about that. And the pucks, the pucks, man. Look at these pucks. Oh, no one, no one's even here watching the video still. So, but look at this. Look at it. Look at, I got, wait. Why are you work? Because it's backwards. Eh. And, eh. and let's make this one red. Eh. That's, <laughs> I think that's cool. <laughs> All right, guys, let me know in the comments below what you guys think. And remember, if you don't troll, no matter who will, I'll see you guys next time. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblet Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. Well, 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 look who's back. Be sure to subscribe to the channel this time, or I will use my Millennium Rod and do devious, devious things to you. Evil things. Also, by the way, Bakora never did ever get that milk. I did get the bloody milk. No, you didn't. This is oat milk. It's not real milk. It needs to come from a cow. How do you milk an oat?